Hey everyone, it's Pal Ponder on Weather. Welcome to Pal Ponder Ultra. We have a volatile weather pattern heading into next week with big temperature swings, a severe weather threat, and a winter storm headed in by the middle of the next week. So let's take a look at the overall setup going forward. This afternoon, we've got two areas of interest highlighted in the blue. Those are typically your more unsettled weather and where all the rain is, where the areas that are in red, that's typically drier conditions where the ridge is and more you know, hotter than average temperatures. So as we move the clock, we take you through time, we can see the unsettled weather driving down there in the southeast. That's bringing some elevated rains, probably one to three inches across the southeast. And once we hit into some of those higher elevations, we're gonna be starting to see some snow starting to fly near the Appalachians, about 3,500 feet and higher. But for the middle of the country, you can see it's pretty dry. It's gonna be really rapidly warming up. But we've got another trough that's digging in off the west coast. That's bringing some unsettled weather for them. And yes, by the time we head into your Tuesday, the sky should open up across portions of the central south regions and then we'll have a pretty significant storm trying to develop down there in the southeast with a very severe weather threat as well and so your big severe weather days look to be wednesday and thursday heading into next week and then to the northwest side of there that's where we're going to start to see this bona fide low pressure center starting to form in new mexico there into the panhandle of texas but especially across the rockies and that's going to swing up through portions of iowa and all the way up into wisconsin bringing a probably a significant winter storm if not some places could get a blizzard but notice how fast it moves through the, you, this swings out and this rapidly clears the atmosphere but then the ridging starts to build back in by the weekend and it rapidly switches back to warm again while we yet we have another trough that's still building off the west coast and then that dives down as well and that one takes across over the middle of the country so you do see a lot of rapid swings with this situation so let's take a look at the overall vorticities and show you what we're talking about a little bit further so as we move through time for today yeah there is we got that instability that's moving across the end of the southeast some of the higher elevations could get that snow but that swings off the eastern seaboard and misses out on the northeast while we got that secondary low pressure center off the west coast that's bringing on some unsettled weather for them notice to the north it's pretty much of a zonal flow so they're, they're in a kind of a, a drier out you know drying period all the instability is a little bit further south but it's not until middle of the middle of next week where that vorticity really starts to get its act together in the middle of the country especially by the rockies and really dives and digs and as it digs it's going to be really increasing these winds and then rapidly increasing these snowfall rates as, as well. But as soon as that moves out, you got rapid clearing and another trough moves in and yeah, deja vu all over again. There's the setup as that you know major winter storm could develop by your Wednesday, Thursday timeframe across the middle of the country in the upper, upper Midwest. And then yet, then we have another significant trough as we head into next week across, <laughs> across the West Coast. So there's a lot of rapid changes and you can really see that in the temperatures. Here's where we stand right now. So let's, you can follow the time up above my head there. And we've got, you know, that trough, where that trough is, right? You got unsettled weather and a little bit cooler conditions. So that's what you're experiencing across the deep south into the southeast. And notice more of the zonal flow where you are in Canada and up in our northern states there. But notice how the temperatures really start to rebound on Monday, big time, right? So the, as soon as you get a south, a south wind across the south, it just really elevates these temperatures. And this is not normal, guys. You're talking 20 to 30 degrees above average, you know, heading into your Monday and Tuesday time frame while, we're, while we were awaiting our next storm system. So this, this is going to be adding fuel to the fire if you will because you're going to have a sharp temperature gradient of well above average temperatures across the central and eastern two-thirds and then well below average temperatures across our western regions and all that air masses are going to be colliding and when that happens that's going to spell trouble as far as severe storms so really the setup really starts to take shape by the time we get into your Wednesday night. So here's the warm sector. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, right? Here's definitely the warm sector. And there's the very cold air with that significant trough that's going to be really diving in into the Rockies. 
and that's going to spell trouble for your Wednesday and Thursday time frame. But once you have that cold front move through, then it's pretty clear, right? I mean, that's kind of your saving grace. Once that cold front moves through by Wednesday and especially into Friday, it'll clear the eastern seaboard. But notice what happens. It, it doesn't stay clear very long with the cooler conditions because, bam, you got the ridge starting to build in from the north again. And this rapidly starts to take over the weather pattern while we yet we have another trough that's going to be digging in off the west coast bringing more unsettled weather by the time you know we head into next weekend so there's a lot of rapid changes and big swings in temperatures that we're going to have to deal with with that this volatile weather pattern coming up if we take a look at the overall 500 millibar you can actually see this just a, a little bit better so here's where you, you've got the uh, instability down here further into the southeast for today. And notice as we get through towards your Florida panhandle area, it almost forms like an eye right across into Georgia. That's where it's going to be able to dig just a little bit more. And that's where the snow is going to be amplified in those regions. It's going to be a higher elevation events, but some of those areas could pick up four to 10 inches of snowfall in some of those higher elevations. We're talking 3,500 feet, right? They, they've got winter storm warnings in place. They've got winter weather advisories in place up there. It really starts tonight and it gets cranking uh, into the overnight and heading all the way in through midnight time frame on Sunday with those winter storm and winter weather advisories. But that moves out. And then the second, you know, more intense system moves in. So by the time we head into your Tuesday, there's the turn. There's that kink in the hose that we talk about all the time that brings unsettled weather across Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas, and then starts to really start to crank out the snow. But it's not until this second system pulls through. But this one is a little bit more, a little bit more significant. Uh, with the uh, low level jet really is tapping into that warm sector. The dew points are crazy high and that's the turn. When we, when we start to turn this on Wednesday night, storms, severe storms are gonna be breaking out across Texas and across portions of Arkansas into Louisiana and to the Northwest side of there. You can almost see where the heavier snows are gonna be flying. Should have major winter storm warnings locked and loaded and in all these places up here across the Rockies through western portions of the Oklahoma panhandle, through portions of uh, Kansas here, all the way through into uh, Iowa. So you've got a system where we're gonna have severe weather, and we're talking all three modes of severe weather easily with isolated tornadoes, maybe even stronger tornadoes. If all this comes together, it looks like it does by Wednesday and Thursday. This could be a significant severe weather day but also at the same time, we've got heavier snows and the winds are going to be cranking too. So you can, I stopped it right here because this is about the zone. This is the zone where I think the snow to the northern, northern boundary of this zone, that's where the heavy snow is going to be just kind of right in this swath right here. That's your, that is your zone where I think all the heavier snows easily six to 10 inches, probably some higher, higher 12 inch totals is definitely, you know, not out of the question. But that's in your Thursday. But notice by Friday, it kind of flattens out. Then it's more of a just kind of a squall line that it, as it races across uh, the eastern seaboard. But that moves out, right? That moves out. And you got a little little uh, re lull in the in the pattern by the time we head into your Saturday and Sunday. But it's not until, you know, off the West Coast, you start heart taking notice again, another trough digging in off the West Coast, bringing more, you know, unsettled weather down there in portions of California. And that is going to be digging as well and moving, you know, through by the time we get into your Sunday and Monday of, of the following week. So a very, very kind of amplified pattern uh, going forward. But if you take a look at some of the dew points, this is kind of the amount of moisture you know, in, in the uh, atmosphere, you can, the, the graph is on the right-hand corner of the screen, but I'm kind of really highlighting some of these areas that hit maybe 55, 60, 65, especially into 70, but it's not until, you know, time frame is around Tuesday, you start getting these dew points, you know, into the 60 range, that's a little bit more moisture in the atmosphere, you have that lift associated with it, that's why we're gonna be creating showers and thunderstorms across Kansas and Oklahoma into Texas, but it's really not into your Wednesday time frame where you have a little bit higher uh, dew points. And you can see here in this sector right here, that's why we have a little bit more significant severe weather threat with that other system coming in. 
and uh, that's going to be tapping into that warm sector and that is amplified even going into your southeast regions but lifting all the way north as far north as illinois so this could be probably your biggest severe weather day is this region right here and this one's going to be lifting pretty far north for this time of year for february standards i think kentucky's in the zone i think even portions of southern illinois maybe even southern portions of ohio but all the areas point south is all going to be in the sector for all three modes of severe weather there's no question and that's going to move out and things are going to be clearing out by the time we head into your you know into your weekend so look at the cape values and this is fairly significant as well so I know this is only February, but you know, with those higher temperatures, I think it actually reaches 80 degrees down here in Dallas Fort Worth area on Wednesday. So, and then we've got, you know, these convective available potential energy values are sitting at 2000 plus at times. That's a lot of energy in the atmosphere. Typically you only need about 500 to get a stronger thunderstorm. So this is four times your normal rate of intensity. Uh, so yeah, I mean, down there, down door towards uh, East Texas, North Texas, getting into the Arkansas area and Louisiana, these, these uh, UK values are fairly, fairly high for this time of year. So there's a lot of energy and instability to, to tap into. So let's take a look at the overall surface map and so show you what we're talking about going forward. This is the latest uh, European guidance. We'll move the needle here. So this is where we stand so far this afternoon. All the rain instability is across the southeast. You have that other trough across the west, right? You see where the snow is starting to fly. That flies into the higher elevations uh, that we're talking about after 7 o'clock tonight into the midnight tomorrow night. But that'll slight, safely move out, uh, move out. And then we'll wait for this other trough that digs in. So by the time it opens up the gulf, by the time we get into your Tuesday, the skies do open up across the middle of the country with all that rain and just a nasty, you know, rainy day for your Valentine's. But the snow is going to be really elevated in some of these higher elevations by Tuesday, but it really starts to crank by your Wednesday as we have a, a bona fide low pressure center really starting to dig down there in Flagstaff, down in the, into uh, New Mexico, and get it into the western slopes. But eventually that'll move across into the eastern Colorado and have a formidable low pressure center going into Wednesday afternoon. And that'll be the cold sector as the heavier snows fly across uh, Denver area, across Houston, Colorado, across uh, portions of Kansas there, Western Oklahoma. And you can see the swath, right? I showed you the zone earlier. There's the swath of snow that takes place and you got all the rain and instability and the, and the damaging winds further south. And that, that, that'll move up across uh, portions of you know Wisconsin, Wisconsin there, uh, but notice how clear it is by the time we head into your Saturday, right? Pretty clear. It clears out. Nice weekend. So that's a very nice weekend ahead. But then yet we'll have another trough digging in off the west coast, heading into your uh, you know the following week with more unsettled weather and heading into Monday. By the time we hit in their twentieth time frame, we'll be talking about more rain again across uh, you know across the southern plains, but. Let's take a look at the snow swath, right? So as this digs down, this is the snow that's going to be dropping uh, tonight and into midnight time frame on Sunday. But there's the secondary, more significant snow line. Look how look how defined that that line is, right? It's almost like they have a ruler uh, with this line because all the unsettled weather is going to be further and further to the southeast. But this is going to be all snow, and some of these can be fairly significant totals. And we'll be fine tuning this. But it's ironic how how uh, how uh, you know this is the gfs we'll just kind of sh you know quickly go over the gfs it kind of has the same thing right so you has your instability down to the southeast has that snowstorm over the appalachians that moves out and then you have the other trough that moves in digs down really heavy snowmaker across colorado and it's kind of the same zone this the the current gfs digs it a little bit to the north it's just a tad bit further to the north than what the uh, the overall European guidance, but right now they're looking fairly congruent, kind of on both models. Here's the swath of snow on the GFS, so they're only about I'd say 50 miles off from each other, but they have a sharp gradient and uh, heavy snows, and this is the zone that we'll be looking for as far as the significant winter storm that's going to be taking place. It's going to highlight the mountains of Arizona, highlight the mountains of New Mexico, but then 
crushed in Colorado and heading into, uh, you know, portions of Kansas, but especially into uh, Nebraska there through really Iowa and then heading up into Wisconsin with a very good swath of snow. So we'll be fine tuning these totals, but the overall uh, precipitation total. So we'll have several trough that's, you know, coming off the West Coast, bringing um, some unsettled weather for them. You can see the graph here with these rain rain amounts over the next uh, seven days. And it does dig across the Southeast. These areas definitely need some precipitation and they're going to get it. Most of this is going to be in the form of snow. But here's across the middle of the country and where your bullseye is, is where the a lot of the unsettled weather is across the portions of the Southeast. They could pick up easily three to five inches of rainfall, you know, over, over the next uh, seven days. And then most of the North here, this heavier swath, that's all snow up here. And then notice the Northeast. It's kind of a more of a dry pocket, right? That This is over a seven day period. They've only got maybe a quarter inch, possibly a half inch precipitation and spots and that'll be just over the next uh, seven days so i appreciate you guys uh following definitely hit the subscribe button welcome to pal ponder ultra my new update new channel and uh catch me the next update why i protect you before and after the storm